Hello, my name is Nikki Brown and I'm a UK dog whisperer. Today I've got Pidgey from Bulbul Classic Company. Hello Peter, how are you Thank doing? You. Good, thank you. You? Nice to see you. You too. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit about Bulbul Classic and today I'd like to ask Peter some questions on that. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself first of all, Peter? Yeah, how sure. you got into Bulbul Classic? Well, I'm a registered human nutritionist uh, and I was approached a good number of years ago now by a, a friend who basically plonked a load of tablets on my lap and said are these any good um, and I was working for a vitamin supplement company at the time so I went and researched them and came back to him and said yes they are very good um, did all the research behind all the ingredients that were in there and looked at this particular ingredient called fulvic acid which I'd never come across before and I'd been at my previous job I'd re been researching ingredients for about five or six years and I'd never come across anything like fulvic acid before and considering how good it seemed at that time uh, I couldn't believe that I hadn't, hadn't picked up on it or come across it before mm. and since that time you know four years on three and a half years on um, the feedback that we've had from people and animals that, that have been on the fulvic acid has been has backed up the research that I read mm. three and a half years ago mm. um, so that's a bit about me really it's just a case of, of doing the research and trying to, to market the product because I thought it was that good. Okay, so can you tell us what is fulvic acid? It's not folic acid, no, is it? No, or, f or formic acid <laughs> either. Or I've, formic I've seen, yeah, I've been had people talking to me about ants in the past as well. No, it's <laughs> nothing like that. It's fulvic acid, F-U-L-V-I-C. And fulvic acid is, the best way to describe fulvic acid is that it's a compost material. Mm-hmm. But it's a compost material that's about a million years old, maybe even older. So it's near it's nearly coal. That's how you can describe it as well. Mm -hmm. It's part of the carbon cycle. So all of the uh, vegetation die and and are broken down by bacteria and and and, and worms and other microorganisms in the soil. Mm. And basically, what they um, kick out is fulvic acid. And so fulvic acid is is a kind of a material that you can't break down any further. Okay. But it's packed full of all the trace minerals that were naturally present in the vegetation to start with. Excellent. So it's like it's like a compost material that's about a million years old. So it comes from the ground. It comes from the soil. Yeah, it comes from mm -hmm. the ground. If you imagine the like the, the layers of the uh, of, of the earth, you take a cross section. Mm. You'd have bands of coal and bands of oil, but there's a fulvic acid is near near to the surface of the earth. So where is it mined? Where do they dig it up from? There are, and this is quite an important point, there are a few places in the world that you can get fulvic acid from. Um, some people get their fulvic acid from water, mm -hmm. and you can extract it from water, whereas ours is from, from the earth, from the soil. Now the fulvic acid from water isn't as good um, biologically mm -hmm. as the fulvic acid from soil. Mm -hmm. So there is a different different you know, there, there, there are different uh, forms there and, and not all fulvic acid is, is created equal. Mm -hmm. um, so the fulvic acid we get um, from the soil is, I, I believe, is mined in New Mexico, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, in that area of the world in, in America, there's, there's like the, the Utah salt plains and all those kind mm -hmm. of things as well in that, that particular area. You've got um, the Grand Canyon, which is yeah. the oldest yeah. hole in the earth. The whole, oldest hole, yeah. <laughs> It's uh, old. It's, it's old. old. It's very yeah. old, yeah. Um, so that's where it's from. But that's an important point. Not all fulvic acid is, is created equal. So it's always important to check if you are thinking of, of a fulvic acid supplement, either for your, yourselves or for your, for your animals, is to check where they get their yeah. fulvic acid. So from. it's a it's a very organic mineral then, mineral source. It's it's a carrier of minerals. Carrier of minerals. Yeah, it's an organic. Okay. It's 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 like a it, it's quite a complex structure if you were ever to to, to look at it. And that structure allows it to carry almost seventy-five, well, around seventy-five different trace minerals. Yeah, okay. so it's a carrier of minerals. All right. So, how can fulvic acid help? What does it? What What does this uh, fulvic acid do for for us or for our animals? Okay. The the main benefit of fulvic acid, or or the, the thing that it does best, or or does um, that that we think is the result of, of all the conditions that it, that it can help is that how it gets rid of toxins from the system. Mm -hmm. I mentioned its structure 
um, about a minute ago but that mm. structure although it, it, it helps it to carry a lot of minerals it also has enables the formic acid to have an affinity for anything in the system that is there in a quantity that that is basically too much or too little so if you have too much of something in the cell it can bind it can search it bind hold you know, grab hold of it mm. and, and get rid of it for you mm. then on the flip side if you have too much uh, too little of something then it mm. can you know discover what the deficiency is and provide the mineral okay so we think it's main the reason the, the main reason why it seems to work so effectively is that it has this balancing ability mm -hmm. so it provides the cell with optimum nutrition and if there's anything there that shouldn't be there like toxins that you know we can pick up from day to day our day-to-day -day lives then it gets rid of those as well mm -hmm. so that's the that's what the, like the thing of we'll probably talk about it in um in a while about the um like the coat health for dogs mm. we think that that's how it shines it up it gets rid of all the toxins out of the system mm. and, and just mm. allows the coat to look how it, how it should look Absolutely. Mm. So humans can have this. Yep. Animals can have it. Yep. Um, any other environments or, or places that we could use folic acid? Anything that's a living organism mm -hmm. would benefit from folic acid, whether that was a a human, a horse, or a or a hydrangea. But you know, mm. literally, and anything that is alive would benefit from folic acid because it works in the same same principle. Whatever cell you put it into, whether it's an animal cell or a plant cell it will still bind to toxins, it will still balance the, the, the pH levels out and, mm -hmm. and it will still provide nutrients if, if the cell needs it. So obviously in today's world we're bombarded in with toxins. Mm. Everything's got toxins in it yeah, nowadays. Unfortunately, you know, yeah. Our air, our water, yeah. um, our food, mm. uh, everything that we're sort of putting into our systems create is, is carrying some sort of toxin nowadays, yeah. isn't it? So are you saying sort of by taking this supplement we can help eliminate some of that that daily toxin build up that we're we're getting in our system it's certainly a help because mm -hmm. a lot of the toxins i mean if you if you um taking deodorants and, and antiperspirants for example a lot of them use aluminium mm. um, i'm not entirely sure why the aluminium's there um, but a lot of them you do, do use alum aluminium and anything mm. you, you spray or put onto your skin mm. is absorbed mm. um, so fulvic acid may help in that respect to help prevent a build up of aluminium in the system but you can apply that to any toxin or any any of these metals that or lead or anything like that that you find in, in uh, hidden in these kind of household products and what about within food we've obviously got a lot of um, preservatives, mm. colours, mm. um, chemicals, all sorts of things going into our foods now. How yeah. does it help with that? Well, any any preservative or, or, or chemical that we put into our food does have a, a basic um, structure which involves certain elements. Um, and again, if any of those elements do go above a certain level, then the fulvic acid can, can bind a hold of them and, and, and get rid of them for you. Um, obviously, it's not a, 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 a crutch to use and and then you know take fulvic acid and you can walk out and you know have as many toxins as you like. <laughs> it does need to you do need to be conscious about it as well. Um, but it certainly it certainly does help in that way. And again, the the testimonials and the feedback and the research that they've done it shows that it can you know get rid of these these um, these compounds and allow the cells to work as as they were designed to work. So okay, so fulvic acid is w is known to help the body eliminate some toxins mm. all right so what sort of form of, of product does it come in how do you how do you take folic acid how can we get hold of it well for the humans we've got the um the something called the well-being answer uh, which is in tablet form i'll hold that up <laughs> um so that's a they're, they're tablets or caplets and you take three of those a day and uh, one before each meal um, and the reason that you take it before each meal is because that not only is there fulvic acid in there, but there's also digestive enzymes and probiotics in there. So taking it just before the meal allows the tablet to break down and then release the enzymes to help you digest your food properly. Mm -hmm. um, and digesting food is actually one of the biggest things that we expend our energy on during the day. Absolutely. Um, which is why a lot of people, when they do take that, notice that they have extra energy because they're not spending energy mm. digesting food because of the enzymes in there are taking that 
taking care of that for you. Um, but there's also vitamins, um, we mentioned the probiotics, so you've got uh, vegetable silica in there as well, which is very important for for bone health, for mm. skin health, for hair health. Mm. Um, you've also got other antioxidants like beta carotene um, and vitamin C and selenium and those antioxidant uh, nutrients. So as a as a whole, we don't know of any other multi-nutrient supplement on the market that can match this one for its form formulation at the moment. Well, I have to say, I taste it every day, and um, I met you a couple of years ago when mm -hmm. I was when I was suffering just with poor energy, poor skin. Um, the diet wasn't great, energy levels, concentration wasn't, and um, you suggested that I start taking this. Mm. And uh, I mean, I because I was a vegetarian for thirty years, I've taken probably every single supplement on the market, and um, some were okay, some were fairly average. But mm. I took this, and I noticed a massive difference right. in my hair, in my skin, in my clarity of thinking, in my energy. I just woke up, and I just felt more positive. Because um, mm. I'm I'm a firm believer, if you've got too many toxins in your body, it it drains your energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. it, you feel sluggish and tired mm. and, and snappy and grumpy mm. and, and all sorts so uh, just by sort of helping the body to eliminate the, eliminate those toxins I found it really 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 worked for me so I mean what about pets what have we got for pets okay well we've got a, a product um, that is, is similar in, in formula but this is in a powdered form um, the only real difference between the pills and the, and the powder is the, um, the the vitamin profile is slightly different because in this one we're getting the vitamins from the brewed and baker's yeast, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good sor source of uh, protein as well for animals. But this is a powdered form and it's dead easy to use. I know you've been using it for a while now, mm -hmm. but it's dead easy to use because you just, depending on the size of the, the animal, you just sprinkle some of the powder on their food. They don't know it's there, it doesn't smell, it doesn't taste. So we haven't had, in the in the three and a half years that we've been marketing it, we haven't had a single case of an animal rejecting the food that the powder has been, um, been put onto because of it doesn't smell. I know some supplements they do put, and this is apparent in the equine industry, they do put apple flavours and Mm. They try and flavour it to make it more palatable for the horse, but uh, with this one, we, you know, the the designers over in America, they just thought we won't bother doing that. We'll just keep it natural. Mm. It has a very kind of earthy um, texture to it, um, but it, we haven't had any animal um, reject it yet, which is obviously positive because we need it into the into the system. Um, so it's in a powdered form, and like I say, you can mix it to almost any any type of feed. Um, as long as the food isn't hot, which it shouldn't be anyway. No, <laughs> <laughs> you should never cook food for your animals. No, no. Um, I always say, you know, uh, humans are the only species on the planet that cook their food. Mm. Um, birds, mm. uh, reptiles, mammals, fish, uh, insects, they all eat raw, raw. live, natural yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. Um, and cats and dogs are animals, <laughs> they're carnivore animals, so... Uh, these processed foods are, uh, uh, as many people know, but I don't promote these pr uh, these commercial um, and processed foods because mm. you know they're, they're a wheat and grain based diet. So, yeah. Um, what else can you tell us about the um, the pet answer? Um, what what animals can you give it to? Okay, you can give it to anything, literally mm -hmm. anything. Um, I always say anything with legs. <laughs> so you know, fish and all that is very difficult to to um, to apply it to fish because obviously it's a powder. Um, yeah. But any any cats, dogs, rabbits, hamsters, guinea pigs, anything, literally birds. Any, birds can have it as well. Yeah, you can put it in their feed. Yeah, their feed in feed their feed. Yeah. yeah, I mean, um, we do a poultry answer as well for for chickens, mm -hmm. which is you know is is exactly the same stuff. Um, but it's also marketed, I believe, over in America for racing pigeons as well. Um, and obviously racing pigeons is quite a quite a big hobby over uh, over here so you can give it to literally anything and it and it has the same effect whether you're giving it to a 
uh, a great dane or a, or, a, or a pigeon it has the same effect the, mm. the, the, the coat or the feathers will shine up you get a very very bright eye mm. um, digestion improves so it has exactly the same um, same impact whatever you give it to you've had quite a lot of success within the equine world with the fold yes. haven't you what sort of made a difference as a horse owner to them again similar stories uh, a very very bright eye a, a shiny coat uh, the manure, the droppings is less because the, the horse is utilising the food better because of the enzymes that, that are in mm -hmm. there. Um, if it's a race horse, they will recover quicker because um, mm -hmm. another benefit of the um, the forbic acid, and this could be a, you know applied to working dogs as well, mm -hmm. is that it's around about 44-45% oxygen. Mm -hmm. So that reduces the oxygen death so there's less pu less puffing and panting after after the working, mm -hmm. um, but it also allows the animal to to run and train for for harder as well. So for for a race horse, it's it, it's ideal. Um, but again, it's a similar story. It's it's an improved improved coat, um, mm -hmm. better digestion. With with race horses, um, I mean we haven't really talked about joint health, and I know I've had a few testimonials for for dogs and joint health. But again, with race horses, things like um, you know uh, knee problems and, and and hip problems, even so far as laminitis, you know it's been it's been quite uh, quite quite good to get this feedback of, of you know problems being solved. You were saying it contains natural probiotics, so yeah. I guess it's good for animals that have been through surgery or been on medication, Definitely. things like that, to be able to help boost their immune system. Yes, yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, most antibiotics they're not discriminatory against who they or what kind of bacteria that they they kill off mm. so when we do take antibiotics and it's exactly the same with animals it just wipes everything out so mm. there is a period of time where the intestines have been completely uh, diminished of their their gut flora so it does need to be built back up but the other important thing to say is about uh, medication is that if a dog is on medication or, or, or on antibiotics, it's perfectly safe to use this alongside. In fact, I'd recommend mm. that you used it alongside so there's less of an impact on the, the gut flora then afterwards. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the probiotics um, and the digestive enzymes, they're the, the, the ingredients in there that were designed to improve the, the digestion. Now, I mean, obviously there's a lot of pet owners out there feeding their dogs commercial yeah. uh, processed dried food, tin food that have got a lot of preservative chemicals, things like that in there. So yeah. that'd be a great product for that. Mm. Um, I mean, there's a lot of dog owners now myself that we, we swap to the raw meaty bones diet yeah. where obviously that raw food contains a lot of uh, natural um, nutrients mm. and supplements, mm. probably everything that they kind of need mm. um, to survive. But I mean, would you suggest this... Um, for somebody even on a raw diet, I an animal that's even on a raw diet. Yes, um, I would. Although the, the the raw meaty bones is is the perfect food for dogs, I would still recommend something like the forbic acid because even when they're sniffing around in the in the garden or or they're going on for a walk, you don't know what they are kind of taking into their system. Mm. Uh, even some like the household products, cleaning fluids, for example, that that many people use, mm -hmm. they do have a habit of finding their way into into our systems mm. and into our, our pet systems so mm. I would say that even if you were on the, the the raw meaty bones diet for the for the dogs then you know it still has a place just to safeguard mm. against any other toxins that might find their way into the into the bodies absolutely like I say there's a whole environment full of toxins it is. you can't yeah you know even even the tap water these days which we're mm. we're still feeding our dogs and things like that they all contain a, yeah a certain amount mm. Lovely. Well, thank you, Peter. That's okay. That's, um, I think that's given us a good idea of what fulvic acid is, is about. And um, so we can, we can look at, uh, I think, the well-being answer for the human. And we've got the pet answer for the pets. We've yeah. got the poultry answer for your for chickens. chickens. We've and got the, the equine. Equine answer for the horses. For yeah. the horses. Yeah. And you do it for the garden as well, I believe. Yeah, we're currently um, trying to reformulate. The, the garden products at the moment but they should be ready uh, uh, fairly soon so as soon as we can anyway again a lot of toxins going into the garden through the animal waste yeah um, through pesticides through the chemical treatments we're putting in our garden so yeah, yeah. again this could help your garden flourish as well absolutely yeah yeah brilliant yeah
Well, thank you very much, Peter. That's it's okay. been lovely chatting to you. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.